Hello and welcome to another video on sequences and in this video we'll be looking at geometric sequences and in particular we'll be looking at calculating the nth term of a geometric sequence. So let's just remind ourselves what a geometric sequence is. Now a geometric sequence is a sequence in which each consecutive term is being multiplied by the same number. So here we can see that this sequence to go from one term to the next we're multiplying by two and we would call this our common ratio. So for this sequence, our common ratio is two. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and come up with a rule so that we can work out any term in this sequence. Now what I've got here is a table and in the first column, I've just got the values for n. So these are just the position numbers. So the first term, second term, third term, etc. And in this column, I'm gonna write down the term numbers. So the first term when n equals one is just three. Now the second term, I'm just taking our first term and I'm multiplying it by two. So I'm taking our first term and I'm just multiplying it by two. Now our third term is just our second term multiplied by two. So we can take our second term and then we're just multiplying this by two. And this sequence just carries on. So our fourth term is just our third term multiplied by two. So we'll take our third term and again, we're just multiplying that by two. And finally, our fifth term, well, we're just taking the term previous to that, and again, we're multiplying it by two. Now, before I go any further, I'm just gonna simplify these slightly. So instead of writing two times two, I can just write that as two squared. And again, instead of writing two times two times two, I can get rid of all of that and just write two cubed. And you can probably see where this is going. I'm just gonna get rid of all of this. And instead of writing two times two times two times two, I'm just gonna write two to the power four. Now what I'd like you to think about is can you spot a relationship between our term numbers and these indices here? Now it may have jumped out of you or you may not have noticed, but if you look at this number here and this number here, notice how the index is one less than the term number. And again, if we look at the one before that, the index is one less than the term number. Here, this number is one less than this number. And if you think about three times two, well, two is the same as two to the power one. And again, this number is one less than this number. And finally, if we think about three, well, we could rewrite three is just three times two to the power zero. Because remember, two to the power zero is just one. And three times one is just the same as three. So now you can see that again, this number is one less than this number. So let's see if this works for the next term. So the sixth term, well, to work out the sixth term, we're just gonna follow the same pattern here. So we're gonna first start off with three, and then we're gonna multiply that by two, one less than six times. So we're gonna multiply that by two five times. So let's see what this is. Well, two to the power five, two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32. So it's gonna be three times 32, and three times 32 is 96. And I know that that's correct because if we follow this pattern, 48 times two is 96. Now we can generalize this rule. So if we wanted to work out any term in our sequence, so the nth term of our sequence, well, we know that it's gonna start with three and we know that it's gonna be multiplied by two. Now, how many times is it being multiplied by two? We know that the index is always one less than the number. So our index here is just gonna be n minus one. And this is the nth term of our geometric sequence. So now it's your turn. What I'd like you to do is try and calculate the nth term of this sequence. And I've put this table there to help you. So first of all, let's work out what our common ratio is. So it looks like to go from eight to 80, we're multiplying by 10. And that's the same for all of these. We're multiplying by 10 each time. So when n equals one, we've just got eight. Now our second term, it's gonna be eight, and then we're just multiplying that by 10. Now for our third term, we're just taking our second term and we're just multiplying it by 10 again. Now our fourth term, we're taking our third term and we're multiplying it by 10 again. So I'm gonna change that to a three. And finally, our fifth term, we're taking our fourth term and again, we're multiplying it by 10. So what is the nth term of our sequence? Well, we know that we always start with eight and we're always multiplying by 10. And how many times are we multiplying by 10? Well, it's always one less than the term number. So it's gonna be n minus one. Now we've looked at two different geometric sequences and come up with an nth term for each one. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can come up with a general rule to work out the nth term of any geometric sequence. So I'm just going to use the letter A to represent the first term in my sequence. So instead of 8, I'm using the letter A. So the second term in my sequence, I'm just going to take my first term and multiply it by my common ratio. And in this case, I'm going to use the letter R. So my second term is going to be A times R, or just AR. Now the third term in my sequence, I'm going to take the second term, and again, I'm going to multiply it by R. The fourth term, I'm going to take the third term and multiply it by R. And finally, the fifth term, I'm going to take the fourth term and I'm going to multiply it by R. So the nth term for any geometric sequence is that we take our first term, which is A, and we multiply it by our common ratio, which is R. And how many times are we multiplying it by R? Well, here, this is the second term and we're doing it once. This is the third term and we're doing it twice. So it's always one less than the term number. So it's always n minus one. And this here is the nth term for any geometric sequence. So we take the first term and we multiply it by our common ratio, one less than the term number. So just to finish off with, I've got five sequences here and I'd like you to calculate the nth term for each of these geometric sequences. Okay, so let's go through this now. So the first sequence, the first term is two. So we know it's gonna start with two. And what is our common ratio? Well, to go from two to 10, we're multiplying by five. So we're gonna multiply by five, and we do that n minus one times. So this is the nth term for our first sequence. Now our second sequence starts with negative 10. So we're gonna write negative 10 here for a. And our common ratio, this time we are multiplying by three. So we're going to multiply it by three. And again, we're going to do that n minus one times. Our third sequence, where we start at one, and we're going to multiply by our common ratio, which is 100. So we're going to multiply by 100 and n minus one times. And here, whenever we multiply something by one, that doesn't change the value. So I don't need that one times. I could just write 100 to the power n minus one. Now our fourth sequence starts with 32. So it's going to start with 32. Now, what's our common ratio? Well, here we're dividing by 2, but dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 0.5. So I can say 32 times 0.5 to the power n minus 1. And finally, our last sequence, which so starts at 5. And what is our common ratio? Well, to go from 5 to 10, we multiply by 2, but here it's negative 10. So we're going to multiply it by negative 2. So we're going to multiply it by negative 2, and we're going to raise that to the power n minus 1. And here, just be really careful, make sure you include brackets around your negative 2, because if you don't, you'll get a different answer because of the orders of operation. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.